And welcome back to the Message Marketing Pod. I'm your host, Christopher Melotti from Melotti Media Copywriting and Message Marketing Bureau. And this is a special episode. I'm really excited to present this. So I am here with Hannah, Hannah and she is from, I'll actually, I'll let Hannah introduce herself. Hannah, over to you. I know. Where I'm from is always like, oh man, because I've been living in many places, but I'm originally from uh, Wisconsin, so okay. the States, but I'm currently living in Merida, Mexico, which is in the Yucatan. And yeah, I'm the CEO of Done For You Copywriting and super excited to connect and jam out on all things, just messaging, marketing, and good vibes with you today. Perfect. And thank you, Hannah, for joining. Um, So we're both copywriters. And so Hannah's background is um, coaching and copywriting. And my background is marketing and copywriting. And we were discussing a few months ago how brands need to go more, like need to do, go beyond copywriting. It's, uh, there's a lot of times where brands will say, write this for me. And the problem that they struggle with is sometimes they have the wrong audience with the right message or, (laughs) or the other way around. They have the right, sorry, right message to wrong audience or wrong audience to right message. And so what's happening is that brands are starting to disconnect with how they are trying to articulate what they do, why they do it, and why customers should care. And so this is what Hannah and I will be talking about today is what brands doing about how their brand communicates rather than just write blogs, you know, write my website. That's all well and great, but are brands really connecting with their customers using a, a unique tone of voice, a unique message? Um, so I know that both of our uh, businesses, Hannah, both of us do this where we don't just write content for clients. We help them articulate their brand's persona. Uh, do you want to jump in on with what you sort of do in this area as well? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think there is an old idea that you just like put out a billboard, right? Like you start a business and ta-da, here's my shingle outside of my office or ta-da, here's my billboard and people will find it, right? Now with the way that marketing and consumerism works is that we're looking for more of like a conversation, of a connection. Like when's the last time you took action on a billboard or really even someone's website? where we need to start going above and beyond to make more of that personal connection because the platforms allow it and people are craving it. So this is exactly what I used to teach. I would tell coaches, here's the idea, here are the ways you can do it, here are the templates. But what I found in being a coach to coaches is that it was like fitting a square peg in a round hole when these people signed up to have a coaching business and all of us as business owners, right? Like you want to groom dogs, you want to coach humans, you want to teach gymnastics. And then you have to also be a marketer and you have to learn how to do this whole other owning a business thing. And it's a lot of effort and it was burning out a lot of coaches trying to be, you know, fit into this square peg or round hole, whatever, (laughs) whatever they were. (laughs) Because they signed up to be something that, they were passionate about. And then this marketing thing became really draining for them. And so this is when I realized, all right, let me just do it for you. Come in here and help you start to facilitate conversation. And copy is part of that. Website is part of that. But also, like you said, like honing that voice, bringing that personality, giving people a reason to take action and work with you. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. And and look, Hannah, you you said that so well, is that this is what it is about, is today brands can sound all the same. Businesses can sound all the same. It's it's generic. And today our audiences are discerning. Our audiences pay attention to, to brands that they can connect with, brands that they can identify easily. In the past, it was, it was a little bit different. Like what we had was we had fancy logos and like you said, Hannah, big advertising spend where, you know, you, you would see Nike and you would go, oh, of course I want Nike shoes. But today there are, a, there are the breadth of brands is, is growing every single day and the platforms in which we connect and communicate, like LinkedIn, TikTok, all of these kind of things are all expanding as well. And so it gives customers a lot of choice. And with that choice, they need identifying markers. And that's where your brand's core message and identifier and tone of voice comes out. 
And this is this is a hard thing to do. You know, it's it's like you were saying, Hannah, like it doesn't matter what your business is, you all have a persona, you all have an idea in mind that it's mm-hmm. very hard to articulate. And so when the problem that copywriters often face, like yourself, Hannah, is that we get told to write a website, but the brand hasn't taken the time to know who they are before they can communicate that to others. I mean, do you find that? How do you find that a lot of your clients will say, hey, write my website? And I'm like, who are you as a brand so we can articulate that correctly? And they go, I don't know. Do you have that? Do you have that a lot? Yeah, absolutely. And I think even before you get into like, like how they figure that out, like I see this all the time when people will send me their website or send me what they want. And then I talk to them and it's like, Like literally today, I was talking to a woman who creates membership sites for speakers. So she helps them do the tech side of membership sites. Yeah. I looked at her website and it was all about like tech and analytics. And I got on Zoom with her and she had like tie dye behind her. Mm -hmm. And she had like this amazing haircut that I could never pull off. And she like used all these words like HECA, you know, like, isn't that funny? And she was just so quirky. And then I looked at her website and I was like, I can't like, did you steal this from a white man? Like, I don't even know how, like, there's so much disconnect, but this is a human phenomenon that we talk one way and we be one way, but then you give us a vehicle, like you give us a computer or you say, format this in a blog and we suddenly become robotic Yes, and just right. Because it's a different way of communicating and it's about training ourselves and pulling out the real life quirks and how we actually are and translating it. It's like literally like bringing a new language into the internet because we're so used to like how to format blog posts, da, 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 da. Yeah. How many words is this? And you forget to bring your essence in. And, and, and that's the thing you're right. Honey, you nailed it. Is that that's the problem. And it's also a, um, a brave thing as well. Like, as in with that particular client, it's being brave enough to, because she, she obviously had no problem speaking to you like that, uh, the way her personality was. But when it came to writing, uh, I found that a lot of clients actually are not, uh, are not, they don't commit. They don't commit to their personality in writing. Because for some, I don't know why they, they, they're happy to pick up the phone and be all themselves and, and have that brand sort of essence. But then on their website, like you said, it looks like it's stolen because they go, well, I don't want it, my website to have evidence of personality. I'm like, what, why this is, this is a great thing. Like we should be embracing that because your customers are, your audiences are, you know, when if you think, if you think about how you search up, and this is to the audience is if you think about how you search up your, your alternatives, like if you're looking for a school for your children or so that you don't just look up one and go yeah that's fine like we you know if you're looking for a car you'll open many tabs on your browser and you'll look at them all and that is what your customer is doing when they're choosing you and your competitors and if it literally sounds like a sounds like b sounds like c sounds like d you're literally giving them nothing to cling to and so this is what it, it is and you and like you know before anyone asks Hannah's you know Hannah's example was an extreme you know where she was a bit quirky and all that you don't have to be that extreme if you're that brand but you do have to have a uniqueness a freshness a personality and yeah. and that has to be genuine and that that comes from investing the time with a copywriter or a strategist to develop your voice and your uniqueness yeah and I think the the piece that is so helpful and like thinking about your brand and like honing this and like, where do we start is going back to your why story, right? You've heard this before. You started your business with a love why. You, this is right? all, this is what I, this is exactly what I preach. Sorry. Right? I mean, I just love it. Yeah. So you start why, okay. I want to save all the dogs and like make them all beautiful. And I love dogs. And I'm a dog whisperer. I'm going to start my pet stylista thing. And then here come clients and invoices and rent and marketing and da, da, da. And you totally lose sight. And this is just part of the entrepreneurial process that I see over and over. And it's like, okay, let's take a big breath and a step back. And like, why are we doing this? And oftentimes we're like, because I need a website and I don't like it. And da, 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 da. But it's like so granular when we talk about websites, it's like way bigger picture, right? And like capturing that essence of like why you do what you do, because that's what people care about. I was just talking to my best friend who um, she just moved to a new town and she's been looking to find Christmas gifts and she found this tea shop. My friend doesn't even like tea, but it was so cute. 
And so she goes in the store and she starts talking to the woman who's so passionate about her tea and where she got the leaves from and why they're doing it. Everybody got tea from my friend. Oh my gosh, I love it. And it was funny. And this is why the conversation started. I was like, Courtney, you don't even like tea. Like, what is this about? And she's like, this woman, her story, Mm -hmm. right? And you can think about that in your own life of like the people you love buying from or the people you love working with. It's because you have some connection. It's not always because just because they're Nike. So often it's because, yeah, I want to be a part of this, of what you created, of what you're about. Yes. I, 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 Hannah, I, oh my God, every time you stop talking, I'm like, yes, you know, but that's, I, this is exactly how I feel. It, and and it's, um, we're not alone. You know, this is how audiences are today is that they, like you said, it comes from a why, it comes from a purpose, a vision, which is your brand's DNA, its integrity, its its initial starting point. And brands that do this really well and articulate this really well, and it's not just through written, it's also video and audio and all of those kind of things. When you, when you show your personality, you give people the opportunity to resonate with it and you give people the chance to find a connection like you said Hannah and and that is what people love being a part of like today people are searching for purpose they're searching for relatability and and this is where brands that can can explain what they do will attract an audience like never before and and it but it's it's not easy you know it's like I, like you said Hannah it's that a lot of brands they freak out because they think oh my gosh no like I I don't want to be so quirky but that's what audiences are looking for today even and even in the most um abstract places like lawyers you don't have you don't have to be like a crazy lawyer but like I've written for lawyers where all of the generic lawyers say the same thing you know we 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 help you in this sort of area but when you get a lawyer that says listen I'm here for this reason for that you know I I want to help people you know I want to put the human back in law and all those sort of things the minute that you can articulate that and put that together and put that on your website and put that on the content that you produce and speak that way and all that, people resonate with you and they choose you over others because you give them a reason to. And I, yes. I, I yes. love the thinking. Yeah. And I think I agree with everything that you said, except for one thing when you're like, yeah. when you put it on your website and here's like a shameless plug to hire a copywriter, yeah. because yeah. the <laughs> easiest way to do this is to not do it yourself because yes. we have those blocks. We don't see ourselves. We just are right. We don't know that that's a quirk that I have a crazy haircut or that everyone knows me for my artichoke dip. Like I didn't think that was important. <laughs> Until I was working with team and copywriters that start to pull the essence, pull the things that other people care about, because we as business owners think t- so differently than our consumers think. And yes. so when you get a copywriter or you have someone to like workshop this with, they start pulling out those things that you don't even know are quirky or relatable. Mm-hmm. And this, you know how everyone talks about like being authentic, like yes. be yourself, be authentic. Business owners are so bad at this because they, they're business owners. Yes. They don't think like the person on the other side of the screen. And so being authentic often means that you need to like get some feedback and understand how people in your real life or pieces of your story that you might not even think connect. Why, like how you actually share that, you know, yep. I've had clients who are like, wow, you really put me out there. And I was like, but that's, that's you. you yeah. Yeah. Like, this is who you are. And she's like, yes. Oh, I never would have said that I was that big of an expert. Or I never would have put that out there. And it's like, but it is who you are. And you as a business owner are overthinking or underthinking how to actually be yourself online. Again, yes. it's like a different language. For oh, business owners. Big time. And, and being a copywriter myself, I agree with you. I didn't mean to sell myself out of a job. Not at all. <laughs> no, no, no. no but, I, but it's just, right. I'm always listening. Yeah. No, but you're the, right. You're right. Yeah, no, you're because, and, and I agree with you there, is that like, that's what happens is like with that lawyer client, she knew who she was, but if she had have written it, she never would have got it right. And it's right. because like you said, Hannah, it's, it's, it's hard to write for yourself. It's like when someone says to, to you, name your five strongest strengths you know, or, or your, your five weaknesses. It's so confronting because you're like, I, I like, I can't, I, you know, you, you have that humble thing or you don't want to be so bold or you don't want to put yourself out there. And, and the problem right. is you're robbing yourself of that opportunity and robbing your audience of that opportunity to get to know you. And, and so, and so like, I agree is that as a copywriter myself, the way I do this best is I connect with a client who who wants this kind of articulation in terms of their brand and I video them. 
like like we're doing right now. And what I will do is talk to the, talk them through, you know, who you are, why you started, why you do what you do, what drives you, what what's your brand's purpose, your vision. And what that does is it allows me to pull out the messages that they are saying without saying it. Do you know what I mean? Like they, 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 because as you said, Hannah, they would never do this without me. They would, they want to, but they can't physically do it because as you said, they're business owners, they're running the day to day. They don't see all their personality that comes out naturally. And so as a result, the best way to do that is to go to a copywriter who can listen to you and can articulate exactly what you say in a way that you probably wouldn't or couldn't. Right. And, and I agree. And, and again, don't think that this is a, a problem. This is a great thing. Like you want to stand out. You want to be personal. You want to have something different that separates you from your competitors. That's genuine. And it's there. Dogs, dogs in the background. <laughs> This must have been good because I had a noise too. Like we yeah. were like drawing attention to this part of the conversation. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's like the, the, the flag. Yeah. Yeah. That's my woo-woo side coming yeah. out. <laughs> nice, nice. And so what would you like? Let, let me ask you, Hannah, what would you recommend if people are listening to this podcast and they're going, okay, I've got a personality. I want my brand to stand out. What would you suggest the next steps are? Yeah. Well, it's definitely about getting out of your own head. So you can hire a copywriter, but a better way to start getting feedback is to survey the people around you. So taking a look at some of your like best clients who've been in community with you or have worked with you and ask them like, what makes me different? What do you come to me for? What stands out when you think about me? You know, literally asking people like, what are the three words that come to mind? And when I did this for a rebrand process a few years ago, I was blown away. I never would have chosen those words to describe myself, but some of them kept coming up. And I was like, okay, I really need to speak to this like inspirational part of myself. And just having that awareness, first and foremost, doing a little survey, you know, it's like the scientific method. It's like, do a survey, get some data, because like you said, you're never going to figure it out in your own head. You've got to take some action to get some of that clarity to come back to you. Yeah. First. Yep. First step. Yep. And yep. then what did you do next? Sorry. Yeah. So, so first getting from like people who know you, who've been in work with you. And then second is like looking at people who you would like to work with. What do they look for? What are the things that they're like when you said, when they open up all those tabs, what makes someone stand out to them? Are they looking for credibility? Are they looking for relatability? Are they looking for, you have the right solution for me? And when you talk to prospects, right? Those are the people you want to work with. They tell you exactly what you need to say, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, like, like for health coaches, I work with a lot of health coaches and they'll be like, well, we just need to get tracking macros and BMI. And they use all these words mm. that health coaches use. But their prospects don't. Their prospects say, I need more energy. My genes don't fit. So we need to connect, right? What you do and how you be with what your prospects are actually saying that they need. And I know this can sound really elementary. It is marketing 101. But when is the last time you took a minute to listen and do this sort of strategic survey? So often we just do the work, bust it out, work, work, work. We stay busy, but this is the invitation to get out of your computer and into some real conversations because so many of the answers lie in the people around us. Yes. And, and, and you, you hit on a really good point there, Hannah, is that like you said, remember how you said, get a copywriter, get you out of your head. It's for that reason as well, which is the language. Because a lot of us, uh, when we're ingrained in what we do, like in our specialties, in our fields, we use lingo and we articulate things in a way that, that is industry speak a lot of the times. And, and that doesn't exactly translate to what our clients or our customers are looking for and searching for online. And so the minute they start to see that lingo, the the confusion leads to hitting the back button. Like that's, that's the truth is if you think about it, look at your website now for the people who are listening and watching, look at your, go and have your read of your website, look at your social media. Do you do this? And you probably do. You probably use language that doesn't quite resonate with the audience simply because they're not talking or, or interpreting in the same way. And again, confusion straight away they go oh they're not talking to me off they go and like like you said Hannah like they're talking about BNI when uh, sorry um, BMI right which is the body mass index which is yeah. what someone probably isn't searching for they're probably searching for I want to lose weight I want to you know feel better about myself feel more confident and it's that slight language shift um, yeah. you know that that that, that will co- 
could cost you a sale, could cost you prospects. Yeah. One of the like gut tests for this, again, if you're really just like looking at your website is would a seventh grader understand? So yeah. my husband yeah. used to be a middle school teacher and I would literally do this litmus test. I was like, would your students understand this caption? Or am I using things like, you know, uh, quantum leaps and, you know, like we each have our, like our niche and you might be yeah. really in the spiritual world and people totally understand you're like, quantum quadrant of crystals and like great <laughs> that's when you're going to get out of your survey but for most of us we need to speak in layman's terms and yep. we shouldn't have to think too hard about what did that mean what did she was that sentence structure it should be middle school reading level when yep. you talk about marketing. and, and I'll, I'll, what I'll, I'll clarify this because a lot of people are probably thinking oh but there goes all my personality it's, it's not the same thing so for instance mm -hmm. let me explain so on my website I have uh, like I'm a, obviously a copywriting agency like Hannah is, right? And I find that that when I originally put copywriting services as a prominent message, I found that while one quarter of my audience understood that, the other three quarters didn't because they didn't they didn't even know what a copywriter was. So the minute that I changed it to, um, do you need words? You know, and do you need to to like uh, do you need to make your content marketing resonate with audiences? And when I started to change, like it's still the same thing. It's still copywriting services, but when I change it to the focus on words for marketing rather than copywriting, the whole audience understood that, and my my conversion rate went up. And and it took me a while, and I never even thought about that. I thought, well, words is a bit generic. But what I found was, if I put my spin on something so basic as that. People understood, they went, well, I'll, I might business use words and now I get it. And this is what it needs to be. It's your brand, as for the listeners here, is your brand needs to be thinking, what does my service or product do that my audience will understand? What pain points am I addressing that makes me relevant and relatable in their lives? When you, it's like a Venn diagram. It's like your brand or product or service and, and their needs. Where they overlap is what you need to be saying. That's the ideal message in there. Hannah, would you agree? What, what do you think here? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Right. That's a sweet spot between like what you do, what they think you do and what they think they need. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. And, and I think I love that you pointed out, like having a simple language doesn't take away your mm -hmm. personality yep. because you've probably heard this before. Like the next step, right. is like survey people who've worked with you, survey people you want to work with, and then full permission to just start free writing. Like, yes. I just want to see how my, and of course, video is another great way to do this. But if you are someone who wants to eventually do more of your social media or take over, like learn some of this yourself is like free writing the way that you talk or like having a conversation with yourself back to this point of like, you're not actually saying like, some of the things that you might have had on your website before, oftentimes it's about coming back to what just comes up naturally in conversation of just how you would describe it. If you were at your family dinner, like what is, what is that kind of like conversational language that you use? Because that's exactly how your personality comes through yep. and stays clear. Love it. Hannah. Well, I mean, to summarize, I think, I think we've sort of made that point for sure. I would say my advice is for everyone listening is if it, it, go beyond just creating content, right? Everyone can create content. It, it's in, very important for your business, but the first step must be brand identification, which means you need to understand your brand, who you are, what you do and, and how you speak. Because once you identify that, then your audience can identify that. You know, like I've seen so many brands that go, oh yeah, this is who my brand is, but they can't articulate it. And therefore when they create content, there's no personality in it. And so therefore they get overlooked. No, they don't make an impact. So the, the idea is make sure that when you are trying to create content and you're trying to write your, you know, communicate across all of your touch points and all of those channels, make sure you've taken the time to identify who your brand is and you've got that document, that, that brand guidelines that's, that talks about how you speak and gives your team example. Through a copywriter, like Hannah said, that's a third party who can understand and take the time to really get that brand right. And then that'll help you from there. So core messaging document, and then all of your communication from there. Hannah, anything to add? 
And I think just the thing I would add is that so often we make this feel hard and we talked about Venn diagrams and Christopher and I have so much energy about this because yep, sorry. This, <laughs> right. And we, we can talk about spreadsheets and documents, but I think for business owners, sometimes marketing or copy or posting is just so cringeworthy. And it's when you start to bring this question of like, how do I have fun with it? How do I bring more me? How do I really showcase what we're about? That energy can be just as magnetic as like nailing the right keywords on your website. So full permission to like have a little fun and get curious because that energy will make your marketing better <laughs> in every way. Yeah. And give your audience a reason to connect with you, to, to resonate with you because they're looking for connection. And if you don't, if you're generic, they're not going to connect. Yeah. Love it. Thank you so much, Hannah. It was an honor recording with you. Uh, I love your work. I love that you're so, uh, so like as passionate as me about this issue <laughs> because I feel like it does get neglected. It, it gets ignored. It's kind of like this unspoken thing in the copywriting world and in marketing. So, um, so yeah, so let, it's good to shine a light on it. I think we should do a follow-up um, to this episode very shortly. And uh, yeah, thank you everyone for joining, for joining us. Um, and I hope you got a lot of value out of this. And if you need anything, please reach out to Hannah. I'll put her details in this in this episode um, or myself and we can chat further for your project, your brand. Thanks everyone. Yeah.